Hi everyone, this week we're going to start working on file I.O., uh, so reading files, writing out to files, and uh, serialization, where you can take data structures in Python, write them out to a file, and then read them back in. Uh, this is something that's especially easy in Python, that's really tricky in other languages, and so it's a great thing to be able to do. It makes your life a lot easier. So what we're going to start with today uh, first is just reading in files, and I'm also going to teach you a few new functions um, using string, uh, being able to split that up into bits, being able to cache the parts together. And so what we're going to start with is this file, which you have linked as um, sp.csv. This is the uh, S&P 500, so that's a, basically a stock exchange. Uh, the first column that we have is the year, so that exchange started in 1958, and we have all the years up until 2018. And the uh, columns are months, and so this is the average closing price of the S&P 500 for each month and each year. Uh, so you're going to get that file, and we're going to work with that and basically write a script that's going to compute the average closing price for each year. So we're going to open the file, we're going to average the monthly values for each year, and then we're going to print out the year and the average closing price. So we're going to start um, with our first command, and that's open. So you use this to open a file, and then you give the actual file name. Ours is sp.csv. And so this opens the file with this file name. Uh, I'm saving this file in the same directory where this script is saved. But you can put a full path. So if you're on a Mac, if you had it on your desktop, you could do something like user slash goldback slash desktop. Uh, if you're on a Windows machine, it might be C colon um, something like this. But you don't have to give the full path. You can give just the file name if the file is in the same folder as your script. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do all the time. So this opens the file, and then it gives you this variable f. That's a special kind of variable that holds the file, and it allows you to do file operations. So we can try this right now and just try to do print f and see what happens. So if we come here to run that script, uh, what we get is this weird output, and it basically says exactly what's happening, that we have a text IO, that's input output wrapper, for sp.csv. So how do we actually get to the stuff that's in the file? So, so let's switch back to our code, and we're going to get rid of that line. And now we're going to look at the next thing we know, which is to do a loop. So we're going to say while true. So we're just going to loop forever. And then we're going to do f.readline. So that's going to read the file line by line. Each time we go through this loop, it's going to read the next line of the file. We're going to store that in a variable called line. Now, this is going to loop forever, right? Our loop is while true, so it's going to read all the lines in the file, and then it's just going to keep looping. And so we want to put in the ability to stop that from happening. So we're going to say if the length of the line is zero, which means there's nothing in there, then break. And remember, break is a command that will break you out of a loop. Uh, so basically, if there's nothing on this line, that includes no new lines, which would be kind of a break indicating there's another line. There's just zero characters. That means we're at the end, and we're going to break. That will get us out of the loop, and so we won't go on to line 7 if we break. If we do make it to line 7, that means there's something in this line, and we're going to print out what it is. So this loop here is just going to print out each line of the file. It reads the line. It makes sure we're not done. It prints the line, and it repeats that until we get a blank line that shows that there's nothing there, and then we break, and we're done. To just show that, I'm going to print done here at the end. OK, so let's flip back and run this. And now we see all of our data printed out here. Um, so this looks, if we look at it, you've got the year. And then if you counted, there'd be 12 different prices. And then at the very end, it prints done. So now we know that we're actually looping through our file correctly. The next thing that we want to do is break these lines up. Right now, they look sort of like a list, but they're not. They're just a string that starts with 2013 in this case, and then has a comma, and then has some other numbers. And so we want to break this up. So instead of just having a long string with a bunch of commas and numbers, uh, we actually have a list. 
And so that's going to be what's potentially a new uh, command for you. And so this is the split command. So we're going to do line dot split. And what split means is take this string of text uh, and break it up into pieces every time you see whatever character is passed as the argument. So this first thing here, line, that has to be a string. So you take the variable name for a string dot split. And then in this case, we're going to split where we see a comma. If you have a tab separated file, you could put a tab in there, which you do with a backslash T. And what that's going to do is take your line. It's going to break it up every time it sees a comma. And then the results are put into a list. And so let's call our list months um, since our file has basically a bunch of months. If we switch back to it here, uh, remember that we've got the year and then the closing price for every month. So we're going to call that months. And to make sure that works, we'll print months. Now it's going to look pretty much the same. So all I did was add this line. Months is line dot split with a comma. And then I'm printing months. So if we go to run this, let's first take a look at what we have here. This is before we were doing that. We were just printing the line. And you can see it has the year. And then it's got uh, each of these values. If I run it again, you can see that the format looks like it's changed a little bit. Um, we now have these square brackets indicating that we have a list. And, uh, and then in some of these we have a backslash n at the end. That's a new line character which occurs on every line if there's a line that comes after it. Um, that's everywhere in here except the last line, 2018, which is our final line. And so if we try to read anything after that, it's blank. Uh, but you can see basically we have all the same data, except now everything is broken out. And you can see that we have those square brackets, as I mentioned, but also all the lines are in single quotes, or all the values are in single quotes. That's because this got turned into a list of strings. So everything in here is considered a string. That's okay if we want to print them, but if we want to use them to do math, which is our goal here, that's not going to work, and so I have another command to teach you so we can have a list like this and then turn everything into a number. So there's a couple things that we want to do first. One is that we need to take the year out of that. So we know the year is always the first thing. So we can just do this. Say so the very first element of months is going to be the year that we'll store. But then we want our data not to include the year. If we're averaging the closing price, we don't want to average the year in with that. And so we'll take that out. Um, I'm going to call this variable m2, which I'm m for months number two. And that's going to be equal to months. And this may be another command you haven't seen, where you can do one to some number. So we could, for now, just say like one to 12. We're not going to do that. But what this would do is take your list and get all the elements from 1 to 12 and store that as m2. So essentially this drops uh, element 0, starts with element 1. Instead of putting 12, we're going to do from 1 to the length of months minus 1. And remember, we do minus 1 because if we have an element with, uh, if we have a list with 10 elements, they're numbered 0 through 9. And so uh, this will tell us how many elements there are the final index is always one less than that. So what this command says is that we're going to take our list months and we're going to get one to the end, basically. This last part gets us the end. And again, if you're stuck on that, remember what we're doing here is just trying to get the index of the last item. And so that index of the last item is always the length minus one. So now M2 just should have the months. So let's print that just to see that working. It should look pretty much like this with the years gone. So if we run that, that's what happened. It looks pretty much like that, but with the years gone. Now we still have that issue where these are strings, and that's what we're going to work on now. So once we've taken the year out, we want to go through our months and turn those all into numbers. So again, we're going to say m2 equals, and then again, probably another new command. So we have square brackets here, and then inside we have this word float. This is doing the same thing we've done with like int or str, 
where we're turning whatever this variable is into the type on the outside. So float, which hopefully you are remembering, um, is a floating point number. That's basically a number with a decimal point. Um, and so this syntax says turn x into a floating point number for x in M2. So basically for every x that's an element of our list, turn it into a floating point number. Um, so this is a weird kind of syntax, but what it lets you do is go through your whole list and convert uh, all of the elements in there to a different type, which can be super useful. Um, in this case, it's turning them all into numbers. So again, if we save and run it again, what we should get is the same thing, but with those quotes gone. And now we can see we just have numbers. Those single quotes around them have disappeared. So finally, we have a list of numbers um, for each of the months. And what we want to do is get the average of that. OK, so to do that, um, we're going to do just say average is we need to now compute the average. So that's just the total of you know adding up all the months divided by how many months there are. So we're going to do sum of M2 over length of M2. Um, you may or may not have seen these commands, but hopefully they make sense. Sum is just adding up all the values in the list on the inside. And then length, you know, LEN gives you the number of elements. So we could divide by 12, uh, but just to be safe, it's always better to do the length. Um, so like if, for example, we only had 11 months for one year, um, our math would still work. So that's our average just the sum divided by the number. And then we're going to print the year, which we got up here on line eight. And then we're going to concatenate on a colon space. So that'll be like 2017 colon. And then we're going to do the average. This is a floating point number now. And so we're going to turn that into a string. And so what this should print is each year colon the average for that year. And I'll get rid of this done at the end. OK, so if we flip over to finally run this, uh, now it's working really well. So we can scroll all the way back. Um, we have this weird thing at the top here, year colon 6.0. Um, that's because the first line of our file has year in the first column and then the numbers of all the months in the top column. Uh, and so the average month number is six, right? Because they're one through 12. Uh, so that's something that we could write uh, a little conditional statement to look for when the year, instead of being an actual year, is just the word year and, and take that out. But we'll just leave it for now. Uh, the important part is being able to work with the strings in the files. OK, uh, but then after that, we have all of our years. And we've got these big, long averages coming after all of them. Um, and you can see some interesting stuff in here. So the S&P 500 tends to be a little bit more tech stocks. And so the price is, you know, kind of increasing as you would expect from inflation. And then there's this huge jump here um, up to the year 2000, uh, where we go from, you know, we're kind of close, you know, slowly going up from like the 80s to the 100s. And then there's this big ramp up. Um, this was the dot-com boom, where everyone was finally getting on the web. The web was invented in 1991, um, and then everybody started getting on. You could make a ton of money then. Um, I did a lot of this when I was an undergrad and in high school. And, uh, and then the bubble burst, and so you can see there's this big drop down. Um, there was a recession in 2001, and you can see that drop down. Um, you can see, again, things start looking real good in 2000, until 2007 when we had the Great Recession, and you get a very big drop down again. Um, and now things are going in an upward trajectory and look sort of scarily high in 2018, which might suggest by these patterns that something's going to drop down again soon. But who knows? In any case, our script is working. Um, so what we've learned here is we can open our file. We can read each line of the file. And then the important thing that we have to do at the end is close that file. Uh, so that says we're done with it. It can be opened in other places. And it's just good kind of maintenance of all your files. So there you go. That's reading from a file. So this opens a file. Um, this command down here reads the next line. Uh, the split command breaks up a string. 
wherever you see a comma in this case. Um, this command casts or uh, changes the type of all the elements in the list. And everything else you probably have seen in here. Um, this is a subset of the list or a sublist, basically. Okay, so there you go. That's a first kind of basic intro to just opening and reading files.